Massonomics. Hi, I was just going through some of our many, many emails that we get in from all of our loyal viewers and subscribers here with Massonomics. And one of the questions I got today was, uh, Massonomics team, how does alcohol affect my training and to what extent should I expect it to affect my training? Great question. That's a great question. And it's a perfect question for one of our other Massonomics, Mass Associates, uh, Professor Shanzi, or as he likes to be called for short, Professor Shans. Let's turn it over to Professor Shans. Hi, I'm Austin Schanzenbach with Massonomics. Uh, Tanner Baird posed a question to me that goes, how and to what extent does alcohol consumption affect training? Uh, Two-part question, the how is basically uh, physiologically based, and I'll delve into that a little bit later. We'll start off with uh, to what extent does alcohol affect training? To what extent alcohol affects training is uh, dependent on a lot of different factors. Um, one of them being how much you actually consume as far as alcohol is concerned. Uh, other ones are weight, gender, um, your ability to tolerate alcohol, your tolerance, you know, genetic factors like that. So let's start off talking with uh, binge drinking, which if you're a demograph from say 20 to 35 years old, that's something that you probably do on a regular basis or have done. Not me, Professor Shans. I'm too dedicated to my training. Um, for those of you that lift weight, me! You might want to know, well, how much is this going to affect uh, my performance in the gym? Or in the sack. I'm sure there are several people who have uh, lifted weights before or after drinking uh, a large amount, uh, battling through a hangover, and then they'll know that it's, it's pretty obvious that um, if you drink to the point where you are hungover, you, you're going to negatively affect your performance the next day. Um, several ways that uh, your performance is going to be affected is strength, uh, your ability to contract your muscles uh, forcefully, endurance is going to be uh, affected, power, explosiveness, all those things that go along with uh, you know, performing, having a good strength training performance uh, are going to be negatively affected if you drink, you know, drink to the point that you're hungover. Now, how much alcohol does it take to negatively affect your performance? Uh, it's really impossible to say. There's uh, so many different factors that go into it. I touched on some of them before. Um, gender, weight, your ability to tolerate alcohol, genetics. Uh, how much you drank, how much sleep you got, what you ate. Um, those are all things that are going to affect uh, how hungover you are and ultimately how much it's going to affect your performance the next day. Another thing I didn't talk about is uh, dehydration that goes along with hangovers. Um, that can definitely negative affect, uh, negatively affect your performance. There is some research showing that if you give yourself a couple days, uh, two days in the, re in the um, study I'm thinking of, they, they tested some rugby players, gave them two days, uh, two days off, and they performed just as well as they did uh, before they had drank. So basically, if you're going to drink to the point where it's going to negatively affect your performance, you think you're going to be hungover, uh, if you give yourself an extra day off. I never take days off. You're probably going to perform um, just as well as you did when you were sober. So that's something to think about. If you plan on going out, binge drinking, your best bet is probably to just lay off the gym the next day um, as far as a performance standpoint is considered. From a physiological standpoint, uh, things get a little more interesting in my opinion with how uh, alcohol affects the body. There's really two ways to, or two important things to look at um, as far as physiological functions in the body and how alcohol affects it. There is uh, inhibition of fat burning, uh, not necessarily fat gain, but inhibition of fat burning and then um, the inhibition of protein synthesis. Two major things that are bad as far as your uh, physique is concerned when you're wanting to gain muscle, burn body fat. So uh, looking at the fat inhibition, um, 
alcohol doesn't so much cause you to gain fat as it does um, just inhibits uh, lipolysis, the breakdown of fat. So when you're consuming alcohol, um, it's about seven calories per gram of alcohol, but it's very uh, inefficient um, conversion process, we'll call it, to where your body doesn't efficiently use the alcohol calories. You'll use about 20% of uh, those seven, seven calories from each gram of alcohol you consume. So from an absolute calorie standpoint, um, alcohol is probably not that big of a deal, the actual alcohol content itself. When you start talking about uh, beer, um, sugary drinks, you know that uh, Mike's Hard Lemonades or um, wine coolers, mixing whiskeys. More specifically, vodka, whiskey, beer, tequila, more beer, more vodka, more whiskey, and more beer. Things like that. Like that's that's going to add a caloric content that you know could have a significant uh, effect as far as weight gain is concerned because it's um, a different macronutrient as far as sugar is concerned compared to alcohol. If we're looking strictly at the uh, alcohol content and the caloric value that uh, it, it supplies to the body, it's, it's rather insignificant. Uh, the, the key being that um, when you drink alcohol for the time that your body's processing that alcohol to um, the time that it finish and potentially even after that depending on what kind of type of detrimental effects are lingering in the body you are going to be at a reduced uh, fat burning capacity which which means that you're not necessarily gaining fat but you're just not burning fat at that standpoint um, then you combine this with the fact that um, while you're consuming alcohol and metabolizing alcohol you're also um, inhibiting protein synthesis protein synthesis being the building of muscle tissue uh, you're, you're stopping your body from burning fat and you're stopping your body from building muscle so uh, those are two two major no-nos you know as far as uh, getting big and strong getting lean um, and just looking jacked overall another physiological point is um, the effects that alcohol have on testosterone and estrogen some research shows that uh, testosterone can be lowered um, via too much alcohol consumption. Now, to what point uh, that's going to happen, I don't know. It's a, probably a, quite an individual thing like anything. Um, one thing that research does show is that there tends to be more aromatization of testosterone into estrogen, just meaning you convert testosterone into estrogen um, more rapidly via uh, increase of aromatase enzyme that, that makes this process happen. So the significance of that is that basically you are lowering your testosterone, which uh, testosterone has lots of positive impacts on the body as far as males are concerned in muscle building, um, increase in protein synthesis, increase in fat burning, help you stay leaner, help you get bigger. And then you are lowering your testosterone, but also converting it into estrogen, uh, raising your estrogen levels. Um, estrogen can have a negative impact on males as far as uh, gaining body weight, um, retaining water, uh, a whole host of other estrogenic effects um, that are just uh, unwelcome to males, we'll put it. So to wrap this up, um, there is a negative effect uh, as far as alcohol consumption is concerned on performance probably particularly the next day if you drink to the point where you are going to be hung over um, from a physiological standpoint it's probably even more significant and maybe not even to the point where you need to drink so much that you're hung over to have these negative physiological effects um, this might happen with, uh, say, fewer drinks than what it would take for you to get drunk. Um, those physiological effects mean, of course, what I talked about, um, the inhibition of fat burning, the inhibition of protein synthesis, and then the aromatization of testosterone and estrogen. Um, I think if someone's real serious about their training, me improving their body fat levels, uh, gaining more muscle, Obviously, limiting binge drinking is going to be of benefit to them. Um, again, it's really subjective as to how much 
it's going to affect each person but uh, if you're going for something significant as far as your goals are concerned stepping on stage powerlifting competitions um, trying to set any PRs you're probably going to be better served to lay off any binge drinking and even keeping social drinking to a minimum. Well, thank you, Professor Shanzi. That was both uh, entertaining and educational. Also, a special thank you goes out to Stone Cold Steve Austin for his performance in the video. All in all, great information here. Uh, this should hopefully keep our Massonomic subscribers happy for a little bit longer. We know they're always wanting more, and we're giving it to them. You're asking the questions, and we're giving you the answers. That's what Massonomics does. It's science. It's massonomics.